No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, okay, um, we have an app called Get List. I'm going to tell you all about it. Um, but before we do that, we thought we'd change things up a little with this presentation because one of the things that was really crucial to all of us on our team was actually the process of working together as a team. And it all started off coming up with the idea of what we were going to build. Um, we took the entire get an idea class to actually agree on an idea. Um, we didn't have it till probably about five minutes before 10 p.m. when the building was closing down. And the reason why it was so difficult for us to get an idea is because we all care a lot, all four of us. Me, Noelle, Chantal, and Max, who's at his girl, rocking girlfriend's graduation. Um, so I just, that, when you have a group of people who all care a lot, you really need to listen to each other's viewpoints in order to come up with an idea that everyone's excited about, so that when you sit down to write code, you care, and it's really hard, but you'll fight through everything that you can to make it perfect. I have to say, I just want to give a really good shout out to, to both Noel and Chang Tao, and I'll go into it a bit deeper as we get to dive into the code. But these guys are an incredible team working together. Noel is one of the most relentless people I've ever met. She will not stop. Like, I seriously, it was like midnight last night, and I was falling asleep. She's like, please push this to the Roku. And I was like, oh my God, okay. So, yeah, okay. So we came up with this idea. And the idea basically is that GitHub is pretty much what everybody publishes, right? Almost every code base is now getting published to GitHub, yeah? There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of repos, right? But if you want to go and fork code or find code or use somebody else's code, it's impossible to find anything useful. You have no idea if the repo is okay, maybe. It might have stars, but I never star apps unless I'm working on them. And so basically, I don't think there's a very realistic view of what repos are worth using. So we decided we were going to come up with a, a way in which you could curate repos under kind of topics and then know whether or not you wanted to you know, bother with that repo. Interestingly enough, when we threw this idea at Michael, he was like, oh, gosh, that's like awesome list. And I'm like, what the heck is awesome list? So people in GitHub are creating markdown files and manually adding items to lists over time. There are even awesome lists of awesome lists. Yeah. It's and, and there's a guy who straight up creates a new awesome list every day. So anyway, that's how our idea was born. I talked a little bit of the team. I'm just going to separate the concerns. And then these guys are going to actually walk the demo, right? So the team is made up of me. I actually didn't write a lot of the of the actual application code, which was pretty hard for me because I like to write code. But I wrote tests. Holy God. I'm gonna get into that after this because testing is actually a lot harder than I thought. I'm really glad I did it. It did cause me to cry at one point. Um, seriously, because I didn't know what I was doing. And then I got past it. So we'll go into that a little later. Um, the front end was Max. And Max took on all of these new things he had never known before and tried to build something beautiful for us. And we're all really, really, really picky. So um, he actually wound up working with Noel as well to kind of get it to come together. And then he jumped in on SEO. He jumped in on the build process. He took on whatever he could to make things come together. We were all working together late, till pretty late last night. It was pretty awesome. And then these two are... I, <laughs> I don't know, I hope I get to code with them someday. That's all I have to say. Um, I think that Chang Tao, I know you described as like a Jedi warrior. <laughs> um, he's really calm and really knowledgeable and very, very easy to work with. Um, he shows you how to do things right, but he doesn't do it for you. He really makes you learn. It's pretty neat. And, and, and Noel, like, I just, <laughs> I, I, I don't meet people that often who I think are gonna like rock it someday. And I just have to say, I really believe that that future is coming for you because you guys killed it on the back end and front end. So, anyway, that's us, and now I'm going to pass it to you guys. Yeah, no. Okay, hi everyone. Yeah. Um, so, this is pretty much everything Megan already said, but you know, maybe you're a developer and the search functionality on GitHub's a little flat, so you can come to our app um, and see what everyone has 
Um, oh, that's awkward. That's my alarm. So if someone wants to turn that off, that would be great. Um, you're presenting! <laughs> so, thank you. So you come here and it is a user curated platform for searching and storing repositories for topics. You can just browse. You, can, you can't upvote, forward, or add, but we won't go there. We'll just connect. So you connect with your GitHub account, and you're here, and um, here in the top right corner, it pulls from the GitHub API your name, and here you can search for a topic. Topic, it can't be empty, obviously. Um, you know, what's topic? What's a cool topic you guys want to find? Firebase. I'm so sorry. Firebase. Firebase. <laughs> Let's find that. Oh, it doesn't exist. Do you want, should we add it? Yes. Okay. So um, we'll add Firebase. Great. You added Firebase to our topics, but obviously there aren't any repos. Um, I'm assuming you don't have a repo on hand. That's totally chill. So um, just to show this functionality, you can't do that because um, you obviously need that, but you also can't do. Um, oh wait, you can, but it's over here that I fixed it. You can't do it on this page where it's like, oh, and it's like, sorry, you need to enter a valid URL um, like this. Um, super simple, I'll copy and paste that code onto the other <laughs> form. Um, press OK. Um, and this is all really just, it's a lot of back end. The front end's pretty simple, pretty simplistic because it's very back end heavy. It's a lot of querying from our MySQL database, which Shang Tao, um, you know, he, he built out the database and the associations while I built out uh, all the business logic. Oh, and uh, sorry, if you press get list, you can refresh, get a random topic every time. Um, let's see, we'll stop at this one. Virtual reality, you can vote them up or down. Um, you can vote this up, but you can only do it once, so you can't do it again, nothing will happen, so no trolls allowed. Chris, uh, <laughs> um, you can downvote. Um, like if you're like, oh wait, I pressed up, but I didn't mean it. That's fine. You can downvote, but you can't do it twice. Um, so it's uh, that is pretty much our app. I'll let Shang Tao get into some of the other technologies we used, and um, yeah. yeah. So the technology we use on the front end, we use the uh, Hackios and uh, Max.js, so for all the flat box uh, display, uh, it's, uh, it's a front end the CSS library that allows you to uh, lay out uh, those uh, 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 elements beautifully uh, without too much hassle. Uh, we use handlebars uh, to serve the uh, uh, pages. On the back end, we use uh, mostly uh, SQLized, uh, especially the SQLized migration to uh, establish uh, build, uh, build up tables and uh, see data. Uh, we use uh, GitHub uh, uh, task force strategy for a lot of uh, personnel. Uh, and for the, and I've also used the Google uh, Promise Library for the uh, uh, accessing and processing uh, 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 to parallel uh, promise to like two uh, multiple different tables uh, for the testing framework. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we will use Mocha Chai and uh, async await for the unit testing on the business logic for the controllers and uh, routes. Uh, we also have this. Uh, 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 we also have this Travis build integration uh, that. Uh, in case you want to push a, uh, a commit or do a pull request, it will, it will show you that uh, if that uh, Travis build has to go fast. Yeah, side note, um, if anyone is like, oh my gosh, I need a modal and I need it quickly, um, you can use um, a really good library is vex-js. Uh, it's really, really, really helpful. So if you guys are interested and you guys like hate the idea of building a modal, but you like having a modal, go here. Because it is really simple. It's like pretty easy docs. Um, and then I guess a little bit more about the business logic, as Shang Tao was saying, for the promises. 
we had to use that library because um, for the handlebars, uh, in order to populate you know, your name in that top right corner for each view that it re-renders, uh, you do have to query you know, from many parts of the database in order to get that information and then pass it as an object to your render function. So we had to do um, quite a bit of simultaneous querying, you know, whether it's the topic and the user, you know, and then once those are all done rendering, then return, you know, dot then, you know, returning all the information and uh, yeah, and it was also a real, real fun learning experience uh, working with Max for the front end. It was really great to be able to have a, a fun, a fun team effort to make it look simple and codey. So that was cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to finish on one, one last kind of learnings, um, and I'm going to speak a little bit on behalf of Max, because both Max and I kind of had a similar experience, where we took on, um, well first, Noelle took on a new thing too, she worked on folks mainly on the back end, which I think wasn't something she always did, but she did it this time and rocked it. Max and I um, took on some new learnings himself on the front end, trying to figure out how to use Xbox and other things. and. Me on the back end trying to write a proper testing framework and I can honestly say like it's it, it's really really hard to learn new things when you haven't actually been kind of taught anything about those things um, uh, for example when I started working on the testing framework I was like oh yeah all the docs and one can try are great when you look at what an assertion is inside of isolation but how the hell do I actually run the test like I didn't even know how to get the test to run like I didn't know you could add the package JSON, you know, all the things you needed inside of your, your test script to actually get it to work. I, these are the things you try and search on the web and be like, how do I do this? There is no answer. And even when I got past that and got a kind of test workflow going, I couldn't get tests to pass. And I had no idea why. And a lot of it was because with the nesting in our functions, we're using promises in our functions, it was really hard to write tests without being able to use kind of like a sort of promise-y feel. And when I was in the Mocha docs, it said, don't use ES6. Like, don't use promises, don't use the single wave, blah, 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 don't use error functions. So on the main page, it'll break your stuff. And that's all we write in is ES6. Yeah, so I, I finally like grabbed someone I worked with and I was like, how the hell do you task something that's like promises? And he was like, oh, you use async await. And I'm like, but the Mocha docs say, don't do it. And he was like, do it. Like, 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 do it. <laughs> Ignore that. And so I just wanted to share that learning because I think all of us here are trying to figure out 8,000 things at the same time. And there's going to be moments where we'll spend two days getting nowhere, like absolutely nowhere, and it hurts a lot. But I think we have to like reach out to somebody who's already been there, already felt the pain, and can actually like sit down with us and just give us those little shortcuts that we need. So I just wanted to share that. It was a challenge for me this time around, but I got past it and. I'm just super stoked to be in this class and be on the seat. So that's it. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone have any questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, so you're talking about doing database migrations and also seeding. So is that the SQLize migrations you're using then? Uh, yes, we're using the SQLize uh, CRI. You can create a migration yeah. file. You can generate a table or generate C data. So yeah. So you guys moved away from syncing your models and actually yeah, doing migrate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, there, and it's both it the, the tests as well. Yeah? yeah if we, call, we call that. If we need to in the test, you can just call the migration to get new data. Yeah. And it just was the most, uh, for us, user-friendly, just because oh, we, we have many to many, we have one to many, we have you know, n to many, because you know, users based on how many topics, so it just made more sense for us to use migration. Yeah, no, it's, it's much more maintainable um, and professional way to maintain a database. So, thumbs up on that, for sure. You guys should like use it if you want to like you know add your repos. Maybe you guys are like, oh my gosh, like David's repos are super sick. Like add David as a topic and add his repos, and we can all learn from him. And it could be a really fun thing. Yeah. Is it live? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll put it on oh. on GitHub. Oh, that's the repo, but I'll put the Heroku link in the general. Um, the, the link's in the repo, too. Yeah. I'll just fix that one copy and paste for that little mobile for when you add a topic, and then you guys are good to go. Awesome. awesome.
number 13 to round out the day, we've got Stephen Anthony 